Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and from the Frederick Health Hospital. Today, we're going to be talking about a case of a saphenous vein graft lesion and discuss whether you can use FFR uh, to help decide whether to treat it. The patient is a 60-year-old man uh, with a prior cabbage uh, who is new in town. He presented for his first visit to his new cardiologist. He didn't really have any complaints other than perhaps some uh, mild uh, dyspnea uh, with a couple of flights of stairs. Uh, he had no chest pain. Echo showed a normal ejection fraction. Um, nuclear stress testing uh, showed a lateral ischemia, so he was uh, referred for a cath. On cath, he had severe LED and circumflex disease, but both the lima to the LED and the vein graft to the OM were widely patent. The uh, RCA was uh, completely occluded proximally, and the SVG to the PDA uh, is shown here. Um, there is an interesting lesion uh, in the distal portion of the graft. So what we see is a, a slit-like lesion in the distal portion of the graft that angiographically at least appears to be uh, significant. So because the RCA is uh, completely occluded proximally, this graft uh, supplies the entirety of the posterior wall of the heart. So um, what should we do with this? Uh, should we just stent it? Um, he is on the beta blocker and a calcium channel blocker, but he has only uh, fairly mild symptoms. Uh, this territory also does not exactly correspond to the lateral ischemia that the cardiologist uh, saw on his uh, nuclear stress test. So, you know, should we just uh, leave it alone then? What should we do? Well, um, we couldn't make up our mind, so we uh, decided to FFR the vein graft. So the FFR came out to be 0 0.89. So we should just let it be, right? Well, unfortunately, it's actually not that simple. That's because if you look back at the original FAME trial uh, for FFR, uh, patients with prior cabbage were excluded. So although it is commonly done, FFR of 0.8 cannot actually be used as a threshold to guide uh, PCI in saphenous vein grafts. The FAME trial results uh, cannot be uh, directly applied uh, to uh, cabbage patients. There's actually still a dearth of data for FFR and SVGs. Uh, in a small study in 2018, uh, 33 patients uh, who underwent FFR with SVGs uh, were compared to uh, 532 patients uh, who underwent uh, native vessel FFR. Uh, 0.8 was used to, as the cutoff uh, to defer PCI. So in these patients, uh, the rate of vessel failure, uh, shown here in yellow, uh, was significantly worse uh, for SVGs compared to native vessels in patients without cabbage, uh, shown here in black. It was also worse uh, compared to native vessels of patients with prior cabbage, uh, shown here in gray. Uh, they then show a dramatic example of a progression of disease within 10 months of a patient in whom PCI was deferred uh, for an intermediate lesion in the SVG with FFR of 0 0.94. So in conclusion, they caution against using FFR for clinical decision making in SVG patients. Uh, deferring PCI using the 0.8 FFR threshold uh, that was derived from native coronary arteries carries a significantly worse prognosis in saphenous vein graft uh, compared to non-saphenous vein graft lesions. There was a, a similar message uh, in the uh, practice recommendation updates for cabbage patients uh, that was published in Jack uh, Cardiovascular Interventions in uh, 2019. Uh, in that uh, article, they noted uh, three small studies, uh, including the 2018 study, uh, which had varying results, and concluded that the use of FFR uh, to assess SVG lesions uh, remains uh, controversial, and that more data is needed to determine how to use it uh, in uh, saphenous vein grafts. So in my mind, uh, whether uh, the appropriate cutoff for SVG should be 0 0.8 or something else, uh, is, is still unclear. I personally suspect that the threshold uh, should probably be a little bit higher. So uh, given the muddied waters uh, with uh, using FFR and SVGs, what should we actually do uh, with this patient on our table? Well, we decided to go ahead and OCT uh, to uh, take a closer look at the lesion. So on OCT, uh, that slit-like lesion looked like a very complex and highly irregular lesion that was very stenotic. It also appeared quite unstable and had a possible uh, overlying thrombus. Um, this SVG supplied the entire posterior wall of the heart, 
So uh, it was hard to leave it alone. So our best clinical judgment uh, was to actually fix it. Uh, PCI was quite straightforward, and based on the dimensions of the SVG on the OCT, uh, we stented it with a 4.5 millimeter uh, drug eluding stent. Now, I should note at this point that the use of uh, DES in SVGs is by no means a foregone conclusion. In fact, there is data to suggest that bare metal stents do just as well as drug eluding stents in saphenous vein grafts. Um, there was a recent meta-analysis of six randomized trials that suggested that there was no significant difference between DES and BMS in terms of MACE, uh, target lesion revascularization, stent thrombosis, or mortality. So in the 2019 practice recommendations update, BMS was suggested as the preferred stent for SVGs in situations where price of the stent uh, is a major concern. So uh, after post-dilation, here's the final angiographic result, which we thought was quite satisfactory. And uh, the repeat OCT showed excellent stent sizing and uh, strut apposition. All right, take home messages. Uh, the most important point is to remember that FFR is not well validated in saphenous vein grafts. FFR of 0.8 does not necessarily confer uh, protection from future adverse events. More data is needed. So uh, clinical judgment is important. And as this case showed, intravascular imaging, such as with OCT, uh, can help with your decision. And if you do decide to stent saphenous vein grafts, uh, this is one area where bare metal stents may perform just as well as drug eluding stents. So um, in situations where cost uh, is a major issue, uh, BMS uh, could be reasonably chosen over DES uh, for stenting uh, saphenous vein grafts. Thank you for watching.